It took nearly 10 years after abortion was legalized for the first woman to publicly come forward and talk about what abortion has done to her. Today, I'm at the home of my colleague, Dr. Jack Wilkie, who was largely responsible for my special guest, Nancy Jo Mann, to help millions of post-abortive women speak up and get the help they need. Stay with us. Nancy Jo Mann is the former lead singer of the band Barnabas, a popular 80s Christian hard rock band. But before she helped pioneer the Christian music landscape, she endured a traumatic abortion experience. For Nancy Jo, her story began at the age of 16 in Des Moines, Iowa, when she became pregnant with her first daughter. Refusing to abort her baby, she married the father. After graduating from high school, they had their second child. Nancy's story begins on the night of her daughter's third birthday when her husband made a life-changing decision. I had all my husband's family there and my mama was there. And he went to, he was taking night classes for college. He was becoming a mortician and he never came home. And so we finished out the birthday party and for four days I didn't know if he was dead or alive. And he came home and he was home long enough to pack and leave. And I did not truly know. I really didn't. I didn't know that men left their wives. I didn't know men cheated. I, I really thought when you got married, you got married. I've always believed that. But that wasn't in the cards for my life. And um, he left. And then my children were three and six months. And I thought I was safe on the pill. And I met a musician, a drummer. I got pregnant. And um, back in the 70s, that's what you did. You get pregnant, you got married. I mean, that's just what yeah. you did. And so I was, um, you know, three and a half, four months pregnant. We got married. We were married two months. And one morning, I, it was October 30th, 1974, that um, he decided that it was a little bit more than he wanted. So he left. So now at the age of 19, you know, 20, I was just going to be, well, I was 19 and a half, I was going to be 20. Um, he left too. So that's two men <laughs> by, the time, by the time you're 20 that you've married and they've left you because they didn't want the responsibility of children. In her distress, Nancy Jo turned to her family for support. She went home seeking the advice of her mother and brothers. My mother wanted me to abort my daughter in high school. And I told her, absolutely not. It was legal in New York and California, but not in Iowa. And when I went over that morning that my second husband left, I said, what am I gonna do? Now he's left, this was said. You know, Nancy, you are never gonna amount to a hill of beans. No man is gonna love you with three children, let alone the two you already have. It's obvious you'll probably be on welfare the rest of your life. You've got to have an abortion. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is my mama, my brother. Um, well, I was a good mama. I was a very good mama. And I loved my babies. And I had hopes for my life. But when I realized that they thought I'd be on welfare the rest of my life, and that I really wouldn't amount to anything, that's when I believed that. And I thought that there must be no other answer because they're college graduates and they must be right. But I do want you to make note, Mama passed away last year, but two years before Mama passed away, we really made amends. Mm. Okay, so I want that to be known. But it took but that long. It took, it took that long. When we return, Nancy Jo tells the story that dramatically changed her life. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. 
That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. After her second husband left, Nancy Jo Mann found herself alone with two children to take care of and a third on the way. On October 30, 1974, after seeking the advice of her family, she was coerced into having a late-term abortion from an abortionist, Paulino Fong. Nancy, tell me about your abortion experience. You were the mother of how many children at the time? Two. Two? Okay, so take us back to that point and take us through your story. I went in, he never performed an exam. I was very large. My daughter was kicking, turning somersaults, hiccuping, um, everything. And I turned, never examined me. And I turned and I looked at him and I said, what are you gonna do to me? He says, oh, just gonna take a little fluid out, put a little fluid in, you'll have some cramps, you know. No expelled fetus. Well, he lied from the word get go. And then he said this, we must do it within the next few hours or you'll be outside of the law. Meet me at Iowa with her husband. Go right now and get admitted by three. I will be there shortly before four. My mother is gracious enough to drop me off in front of Iowa Lutheran Hospital in Des Moines. But I want you to know that every picture on the walls I felt were staring at me. And I was dirty. Something inside of me. I didn't have no one to tell me anything. I knew what I felt. I felt the pictures were staring at me. And even they thought I was dirty. I had no idea. I didn't even know what other abortions were. But in your heart of hearts. So you knew. Oh. Well, I never wanted it, but it, there was, where was the out? Where was there an offer? Where, where, was a, where was a word of encouragement? This never would have happened, but that wasn't, it's, and it's still going on today, the amount of coercion and forced abortions. When you delivered your daughter, what was that like? He arrived about 10 till 4. Dr. Paulina Fong did. And they took me down to the room across from the nurse's station. And there I laid on the table. And I'm laying there. I want you to know that literally the weight of the world was crushing my chest. And I don't know if you, sir, or if anybody that might watch this has ever had so much fear in you that you cannot move and you cannot speak. But inside of me, everything was screaming. Please don't do this to me. Please don't. And I couldn't get a sound out. Once I saw that needle in the size of the syringe and the IV pole they started hanging of the 20% concentrated saline solution. Nancy Joe and her baby were victims of a saline abortion. Her abortionist never told her what would happen during the process. Only after it began did she realize the magnitude of her decision. That finally hit my head that she was going to die. That never entered my mind. I talked to her for the hour and a half it took her to die. I begged her to forgive me. I told her I didn't want her to die. The legalization of Roe v. Wade began the deterioration and the desensitization of people's hearts and minds in this country. Infections and complications from the abortion continued for the next four months. She finally sought help from a different doctor and had to undergo a complete hysterectomy due to the damage her abortionist had inflicted. But she was still unable to admit the reason for her physical condition. I would have had to tell anybody that I saw what I did. And what I did is I killed my own daughter. 
That's what I did. And I couldn't tell anybody that. It was a matter of months later that I underwent a total hysterectomy because of my safe, legal, clean, hospital performed abortion that did not protect me from whom? My doctor. It didn't protect me from my doctor. Roe v. Wade doesn't protect women. Coming up, Nancy Jo summons the courage to share her story with others. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Each week we feature real people who deal with real life issues head on. Some of their experiences are uplifting, while others will break your heart. But in the end, the message is clear. Those who follow biblical principles on the issues of life are blessed. Become a partner with us in providing a positive, life-affirming message to help change the way the next generation values innocent human life. Please consider a generous gift to help offset the costs of producing this important quality programming. You can donate on our secure website at facinglife.tv or by calling the phone number on your screen during normal business hours. Together, we can make a real difference for life. After her abortion, Nancy Jo Mann was having a difficult time finding a purpose for her life. Then one day, while living in California, she saw an ad for an opening with a rock band. Nancy Jo auditioned and became the lead singer of the Christian rock band Barnabas. Through her music career, she turned her life around and finally gained the courage to tell her story to Dr. Jack Wilkie. In 1982, Dr. Wilkie, then president of National Right to Life, was lecturing at a pro-life event in central Iowa. After a long day of speaking, Dr. Wilkie was introduced to Nancy Joe. A guy who helped to put the thing together, Bob Dolph, he was an attorney there, he said, Jack, before you go, I want you to meet a young lady. <laughs> I said, oh, Bob, look, I'm shot. I, I've been going all day. I, I, I haven't got it. Yes, he said, it won't take long. You want to meet this young lady. I said, not really. He says, please. All right. So almost everybody was gone. There were folding chairs on this basketball court. And we sat down there. And in came this young man and this young lady. And uh, she was straight from the carnival. And she was dressed that way. And, uh, but she had this sad look on her face. And he was attentive to her, but she just sat down there. And Bob said, now, Nancy Jo, tell your story to Jack, to Dr. Wilkie. And she told me her story. And, um, well, I still sort of almost choke up over it. It, it, it brought, brought tears to her eyes. And um, so I, I looked at Nancy and I said, Nancy, why are you telling me this? And she said, well, you know, I've been through hell. And um, I was wondering if I would tell this story to some other women, maybe they wouldn't get abortions. Click, click. Well, this was just under 10 years since abortion had been legalized in the United States. And I've been, you know, in the forefront this whole time. In all of this time, we had never had a single woman who had had abortion, who faced the camera and told her sad story. Soon thereafter, Nancy Jo Mann shared her story at the National Right to Life Convention in New Jersey. We brought this kid to New Jersey. And of course, they had a full program. And I said, clear the deck. General session, this young lady's gonna tell her story. And she did. And everybody was crying. She, um, uh, she was an absolute sensation. How did Nancy Joe's story then affect the efforts to end abortion? Well, it was an icebreaker. As I've mentioned, no woman had told her story publicly before then. And what Nancy did was set an example. And after her, then plop, 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 
plop, plop, plop, plop, plop, plop, plop, plop. From there on in, when I would lecture, and I lectured a great deal, it became occasional and then more common and then almost routine several years later that before I would talk, a woman would get up and tell her story. And it was like night and day from before then. And because of what Nancy broke the ice on and things kept moving from there, we then had a double argument. Not just it kills babies, that's bad, but it hurts women, that's bad. Encouraged by Dr. Wilkie, Nancy Joe founded Women Exploited by Abortion, or WEBA. The group was started to support post-abortive women and help them find healing from their pain. It also allowed Nancy Jo to make public the facts of her own post-abortion trauma. What got Weba going? When did it start? I just felt that, you know, if I'd been hurt as much as what I'd been hurt, maybe there was maybe one or two or three other women out there. And if there was, we could talk. I mean, at least we could talk. I had nobody to talk to. And every day, every day for three years I cried till I grieved it out. So how did you work together to make Weba a success? Well, you know, I promoted Nancy talking whenever and however I did. We talked about it through the National Right to Life newspaper. Um, the conventions. And uh, with that publicity, other places started to, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, here's a gal who's talking, another one as I've mentioned, and, and now uh, it's very common that women, and Men. January 22nd, stand in front of the Supreme Court. Here's 50 women carrying their signs, abortion hurts women. Uh, it, it's, it's out there now. Jack, do you think that the women who have come forward to talk about their pain and find healing in part owe a debt of gratitude to Nancy Joe? If we go back far enough, yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of them wouldn't know that, but Nancy Joe was the pioneer here. She's the first kid who had the guts to step out and talk about it. In a moment, we'll hear Dr. Wilkie's hopes for the future of the pro-life movement. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. Nancy Jo Mann's story has shed light on the half-truths and outright lies of the abortion industry. In 1984, she received Iowa's award for Outstanding Young Woman of America for her efforts with WEBA. Her story continues to give post-abortive women the courage to speak out. Nancy Jo, what would you say to a woman who may be watching this program and contemplating abortion? I would have to say to them that there is so much more out there for you than what you're being told and misled to believe. I want the truth out there because we're not talking again about tissue or products. We're talking about my daughter, whose name is Shauna Marie. When my daughter asked me two years ago, Mom, I know it's going to tell you what your gift is, but <sighs> it's a mother's ring. Do you want two or three stones? And I said, three. 
three. Sean is our, your sister and my daughter. She just isn't here with us. That's all. It's been over 20 years since Nancy Jo told her story to Dr. Jack Wilkie. Now the president of Life Issues Institute, Dr. Wilkie is optimistic about the future progress of the pro-life movement as more post-abortive women share their stories. Are you optimistic that we will succeed in ending abortion? Well, I was there at the start. Barbara and I were, and we've been an integral part of it all the way up. Uh, the answer is yes, but we won't live to see it. We're in our mid-80s, and we're just about over the horizon pretty soon. But let's, let's look at one little thing here, birth rate. People who are pro-life average two, three, and four kids. People who are pro-abortion average one, or maybe none. Now that's been going on for some time, but there's enough new pro-lifers being born from these families that we are seeing a swing. Here in the last 10 years, for instance, we've gone from about 45% pro-life to 55% pro-life. The next big thing, women are hurt by this. It used to be that abortion for the young lady was the greatest thing since sliced bread. No more. Even the National Abortion Rights Action League now says, well, it's not too good a thing.